Does any of this sound familiar to you? You sit down to work in the morning. It takes a few minutes to get started, but soon you find yourself on a roll. You're making progress on an important project, and you skip your morning break and you work through lunch. When you finally stop to take a break, you realize you've been working nonstop for five hours. You feel a sense of pride for pushing yourself and doing more work than other people in your office or at your school. But the second half of the day is a different story. You find it hard to focus. You're easily distracted and highly irritable. You're short with your colleagues and your friends, and you need coffee, tea, or sugary snacks to have enough energy to get through the afternoon. By dinner time, you're completely wiped out. For the rest of the day, you feel like a zombie. The only thing you want to do is zone out in front of the TV or your laptop. If any of that sounds familiar to you, you're not alone. That scene was my life for years. I believe that pushing myself for hours at a time and skipping breaks was what high performers did. I was horribly mistaken. Dr. Jim Lair is the co-founder of the Human Performance Institute and the author of The Power of Full Engagement. He's dedicated his professional life to increasing the performance of elite athletes and executives. When he first started working with elite athletes, he couldn't quite pinpoint what made the difference between his low-ranked, low-performing athletes and his high-ranked, high-performing athletes. Both athletes seemed to have incredible talent and work ethic. Then, one day, he notices high-performing tennis players doing something strange. Between points and between sets, these high-performing athletes seemed to be zoning out. In the middle of an intense match, they would stare down at their racket, lower their shoulders, and appear to be in a zen-like state. So, days later, he had some of his tennis players wear heart rate monitors and observe their heart rates throughout a match. Again, he saw the high-ranking, high-performing tennis players frequently engaging in short rituals of recovery, where they were relaxed enough to lower their heart rates by as much as 20 beats per minute between points. And the low-ranked, low-performing athletes had no ritual of recovery. They kept their heart rates elevated throughout the match and sustained a high level of intensity for long stretches of time. In the later half of the matches, these athletes would make more errors that would cost them the match. And the athletes who fluctuated their focus and their heart rate throughout their matches maintained a high level of performance throughout their matches. Dr. Jim Lair learned that many other great athletes had short and frequent rituals of recovery like these top ranked tennis players. Jack Nicklaus, arguably the greatest golfer who has ever lived, once said, my focus begins to sharpen as I walk onto the tee. It then peaks as I set up to the ball and execute the swing. Then I descend into a valley as I leave the tee, either through casual conversation with a fellow competitor or by letting my mind dwell on whatever happens into it. It turns out that high performers are able to perform at a consistently high level for long periods of time because they can rapidly cycle between periods of full engagement and complete disengagement. In other words, the power for them to be fully engaged and be their best selves is generated by frequent disengagement. Co-author of The Power of Full Engagement, Tony Schwartz, learned that this principle of full engagement was also valid in the business world. When Schwartz would explain the importance of frequent rituals of recovery, almost every workaholic executive was skeptical. They were proud of their 12-hour workdays and 4-hour marathon meetings. They thought taking breaks was a sign of weakness. And real executives were like well-tuned machines that could sustain a high level of focus throughout the day. But upon closer inspection, these executives were easily distracted, the relationships were fractured, and they were weeks away from burning out. When Schwartz explained the habits of high-performing athletes and got them to try building short rituals of recovery into their day, the executives were shocked at the difference. One executive named Bruce told Schwartz that after incorporating mandatory 15-minute breaks after 90 minutes of focus during any meeting, his team was able to get more done in less time and have more fun doing it. Co-author Tony Schwartz convinced many executives that taking breaks isn't a sign of weakness, it's a sign of high performance. As much as you might think you're a machine and you can put on long hours of work without breaks and crank out a steady stream of quality work, you're kidding yourself. In order to bring your best self to your work, you need to be fully engaged. And to be fully engaged, you must practice frequent disengagement. If you fail to frequently disengage during the day, your thinking will become imprecise, your mistakes will pile up, and you will become easily distracted. What should take you one hour to complete will now take you three or four hours. I know because that was my life for years. The key is building a set of recovery rituals into your day and executing those rituals in two scenarios. First, 
after every 90 minute block of continuous focus. And second, any time you start to feel slightly irritable or on the verge of exhaustion. The purpose of a recovery ritual is to restore your four energy sources. When these four energy sources are full, you can fully re-engage with a problem, project, or person you're talking with. The four energy sources are physical energy, emotional energy, mental energy, and spiritual energy. Now, there will always be demands on our time, so it's important to get the most amount of recovery we can in the least amount of time. To help you get started building a set of rapid recovery rituals, here are a list of rituals that I practice daily. Hopefully, some of these can spark your thinking. For the biggest physical energy gains in the least amount of time, I like to walk up a flight of stairs, or go for a jog around the block, or do a set of push-ups. I do these exercises just long enough to intensify my breathing, but not long enough to break a sweat and require a change of clothes. By moving my body and breathing heavily, I oxygenate my cells and rejuvenate my brain. Then I will return to my desk and drink a cold glass of water. Lehrer and Schwartz say, Drinking water, we have found, is perhaps the most undervalued source of physical energy renewal. Drinking water has such a profound impact on your physical energy, largely because your brain and your heart are made of almost 75% water. Even the slightest dehydration can result in devastating energy drops. For the biggest emotional energy gains in the least amount of time, I like to call or text someone I enjoy to make plans later that evening or that week, like planning a special dinner with my wife. Planning events with people I enjoy being around creates a sense of anticipation and excitement that I can carry into my next work session. For the biggest mental energy gains in the least amount of time, I go for a walk and listen to music. My goal here is to let go of whatever I'm working on and simply let my mind wander. If I have a thought related to what I'm working on, I quickly let it go and let my mind wander again. By consciously not thinking about what I'm working on, I let that problem incubate in my subconscious. Then when I return to my work 10 to 15 minutes later, I have a flood of ideas and I'm excited to get working again. The same effect can be had by having a short nap or by meditating. For the biggest spiritual energy gains in the least amount of time, I like to take out a piece of paper and write down how I want to be remembered and who I want to help. Now I know when you hear spiritual, you probably just think religion, but you don't have to be religious to increase your spiritual energy. Spiritual energy comes from thinking about things beyond yourself or bigger than yourself. I find the most spiritual energy comes from tapping into a sense of purpose. By reflecting on how I want to be remembered, I think of what I stand for, what my core values are, what words I want people to use to describe me when I'm gone. By thinking of who I want to help, I go beyond selfish interests and worries and consider the sacrifices I would make for others. I often think of my wife. I think of you guys, subscribers and customers. And hopefully one day, if I have kids, my children. Now after this video, take 10 minutes to write out your custom two or three recovery rituals that you can execute during the day after 90 minutes of intense focus or any time you feel irritable. Try to incorporate components from each energy category, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. By building and practicing rituals of recovery into your day, you can return to work fully engaged and be your best self. That was the core message that I gathered from The Power of Full Engagement by Jim Lair and Tony Schwartz. This book is filled with valuable insights and high performance. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribe to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. As always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.